In today's Gospel, St. John the Baptist is echoing the words of Isaiah the prophet when he says, Make ready the way of the Lord, make straight his paths, make the crooked ways straight and the rough ways smooth. Every month we have an examination of conscience on a different virtue. And that's with that sort of goal in mind, to make the crooked ways straight and the rough ways smooth. This month's virtue is humility. Humility is so important that it's one of the two virtues that Christ our Lord explicitly commanded us to learn from Him. Learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Since humility is so important for our moral life, and since we've been commanded by our divine Savior to be humble, it's important for us to have a clear idea of precisely what it is. But before we look at what humility is, let's take a look at what it is not. It's not some sort of cringing, sissified, hand-wringing, oh, look at me, I sure am worthless routine. That's not humility. St. Bernard gives us a guide. He says there are three kinds of humble people, and two of them are not humble. First, there's the folks that feel humble. But just because someone feels humble doesn't mean that he is humble. And we should all be aware of being cautious about what our feelings do, since we don't have the gift of integrity. So there's the people that feel humble. Then there's the folks who think they're humble. They like to think how humble and unworthy they are. But St. Bernard points out that just because someone thinks they're humble doesn't mean that he is humble. Third, there's the folks that are humble. They have a virtue which enables them to realize what they are actually in the sight of God and then to act accordingly. So again, according to St. Bernard, there's three kinds of humble people, the first two of whom are not humble at all. And that's the people that feel humble, the people that think they're humble, and then the people who actually are humble, who realize what they are in the sight of God and act accordingly. So if we want to get a good grip on the true virtue of humility, we need to remind ourselves of exactly what we are in the sight of God, so in that way we can realize how to act accordingly. Okay, Father, so how are we in the sight of God? Well, to answer that, we'll do a little review. We've heard all this before. We need to start by reminding ourselves of two facts that should be obvious. First off, we're all creatures. And being a creature means that we depend on God for both our being and our existence. Second off, God is not a creature. He's not dependent on anything for his being. He is the self-existent being, as he made perfectly clear to Moses when he told him his name. I am who am. So we'll follow Frank's sheet for a moment to unpack those two truths. First, that God is a self-existent being. And second, that we're creatures that depend on Him. First off, God doesn't exist because of any other thing. He's the source of all things. As we sing in the Creed, He's the creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. He's the self-existing being. That means that His nature is such that He must exist. God must exist. Created beings may or may not exist. Each of us has a birthday. A year before our birthday, two years before our birthday, ten years before our birthday, we didn't exist. God must exist. He cannot not exist. His nature is to exist. God is existence. Now that's really incredible if we rethink about it. To see the incredible difference, we'll take a look again at this podium. It'll help us think about the great difference between God and creatures. When the carpenter finished making this podium and washed his hands and went home to supper, why did it continue being a podium? Because it's made out of wood, and wood has properties that make it hard and solid and so forth. So when the carpenter left this podium, it continued existence by virtue of the properties of the material he made it out of, which is wood. Wood has those properties, so he could walk away from it and it'd stay existence by virtue of the properties of wood. Okay, so what, Father? Well, think about this. If God, who's the maker of all creatures, left them, they would continue in existence by relying on the material out of which he made them. And what material did God use to make everything? Nothing. God didn't use anything. He made everything out of nothing. What are we saying then? What we're saying is the fact that all creatures are given existence by God and the fact 
that he used absolutely no material when he was making them means that he must continually hold all creatures, including us, above the surface of nothingness constantly at all times. In other words, he's constantly pouring being into all things that exist. Because if he walked away and left them for even a moment, these creatures, including us, would instantly cease to exist. We'd collapse back into nothingness. We'd be in existence by virtue of the material, the properties of the material out of which he made us, which is nothing. That means every creature, the podium, you, me, every thought, even our sinful thoughts, every creature, everything is held above the surface of nothing by, at all times by God. So much for the review. We've heard that all before. Okay, Father, what does this have to do with the virtue of humility? Remember that humility is a virtue which enables us to realize what we actually are in the sight of God. And then that enables us to act accordingly. And so now we've just seen the first and most fundamental truth about what we are in the sight of God. And every creature in the sight of God is that we depend absolutely and completely on Him. Absolutely and completely. What we really are in the sight of God are these little bits of nothingness that He's holding up into being. We can do nothing of ourselves. But the picture still doesn't end there. What do we have that God hasn't given us? What can we claim that's actually ours? With the exception, of course, of our divine Lord and His Mother, every one of us has used, misused, and abused the gifts that God has given us. As St. Paul says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So what do we have that God hasn't given us? What can we claim that's actually ours? Our sins. The only thing that we can actually claim that's 100% ours are our sins. That's nothing to brag about. Our Lord revealed to St. Catherine of Siena that if even we've ever committed to even one single tiny venial sin, even one, no punishment on earth could, fully, or could ever fully make amends for it. No punishment on earth could fully make amends for even one tiny venial sin. So when we see things correctly, when we're seeing clearly through the lens of humility, we realize that what we are are little bits of nothing constantly held into being by God. And that besides existence, He's poured down on us so many gifts of nature and grace. And what have we done? We've turned around and, pay, and paid back His incredible generosity with our sins. And by our sins, we deserve punishment. And the punishment we deserve for even the smallest sin is more than could be done, we could do, suffer in this whole life. So that's reality. And once we realize that, that's humility. And it also makes us realize that we should want to suffer anything that God wills us to suffer, especially if it's painful and unpleasant in reparation for what we've done against Him. Okay, Father. But you said humility is a virtue which enables us to realize what we are on the side of God. Now we've seen what we are on the side of God. It's little bits of nothing he's holding above the surface of nothingness. And we've repaid him by sinning. But what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to conduct ourselves now we've realized that? That's a good question. St. Peter Julian Amar gives us an answer. Quote, Jesus invited us to be like him, humble of heart. But what is humility of heart? It consists in receiving humiliations from God with a submissive love in accepting one's state of life and one's duties, whatever they are, and in not being ashamed of one's condition. Close quote, St. Peter Julian M.R. So humility of heart is receiving humiliations from God with submissive love, accepting our state of life and duties, and not being ashamed of our condition. Okay, so we can see what accepting our state in life is and our duties not being ashamed of our condition. But what does it mean to accept humilities with a submissive love? Well, there's really three ways, only three ways, we can react to humiliations that come our way. First, we can rebel. That's not humble. Second, we can accept them. That's good. We have basic humility then, since humility requires us to accept our sufferings without resentment or rebellion. We want to strive to accept these humiliations and sufferings as calmly and dispassionately as possible. And that includes even the reaction to the humiliation of our own sins. See, a proud man is amazed and just shocked when he falls into sin. I can't believe I did that. 
But a humble man repents and he gets up and dusts himself off and says, Well, see, Lord, that's how I am. He's not making an excuse. He recognizes weakness. St. Francis de Sales says that calmness and peacefulness when considering our sins and our sinfulness is a very useful means for growing in the virtue of humility. St. Catherine of Genoa would find herself guilty of a sinner imperfection. She'd calmly explain, Well, Lord, there's just another fruit from my garden. If you don't protect me, I'll be guilty of far worse. And of course, we know the expression of St. Philip Neri. Every morning, he'd turn to our Lord and say, Lord, if you don't keep both hands on me today, I'm going to betray you far worse than Judas. That's humility. When we get troubles, we accept them. And when we fail, we say, well, see how I am, Lord? That's just another fruit from my garden. So we could rebel. That's not good. We can accept humiliations. Or the third possibility is we can cheerfully accept them. Why? Because then we're more closely imitating Christ our Lord in his work of salvation. We're more closely imitating the saints who know how to behave. For example, St. Francis Borgia was traveling with a fellow Jesuit at one time, and they ended up sharing a room one night. And this, the, the poor man he was sharing a room with, very congested and having some kind of coughing, hacking spell all night, and spitting up phlegm and coughing and hacking. In the morning, he was horrified when he woke up and realized that he just spit all over St. Francis, all over him, and especially all over his face. St. Francis hadn't woken him up all night. St. Francis Borgia said, relax, don't worry, I can't think of a place more fitting for spittle than my face. Now, if we find that horrible, it tells us how much we have to grow in humility, huh? Because our Lord certainly had that kind of humility. Being humble of heart means either we accept humiliations without resentment or rebellion, or better yet, we cheerfully accept them. It means accepting our state of life and our duties, whatever they might be, and that we're not ashamed of our condition. But we don't need the stories of the saints to understand that. Look around in the church. Think for a while on the crucifix or the stations. Or think about the manger scene and what Christmas signifies. There's enough meditations on humility in either of those three things, the crucifix, the way of the cross, or the manger, to last. An entire eternity. The view. We've seen that humility is a virtue which enables people to realize what they actually are in the sight of God and to act accordingly. We've seen that in reality, God is holding us above the surface of nothingness, that we owe Him everything, and what have we done? We have repaid Him by our sins. And that means we deserve any punishment we might get. We need to shape our conduct according to these truths, which means either we accept humiliations without resentment or rebellion, or better yet, we pray that we have the grace to cheerfully accept them. We accept our state of life and our duties, whatever they might be, and we're not ashamed of our condition. Let's close with a thought from St. John Climacus. Quote, Humility is the only virtue that no devil can imitate. If pride made demons out of angels there's no doubt that humility could make angels out of demons humility is the only virtue no devil can imitate if pride made demons out of angels there's no doubt that humility could make angels out of demons if humility could make an angel out of a demon it can surely make a saint out of any one of us O Jesus meek and humble of heart Make our hearts like unto thine. In the name of the Father and the Son.